What is Python? Python is a scripting language. His creator, Guido van Rossum, situated it between C and Shell. Python is object-based. An object is a part of code that has internal data which differentiates it from other objects of the same class. It has functions or methods which make it possible to modify it. Other object-based programming languages are Java and C++. It is interpreted. We can launch commands interactively, such as BASIC, LOGO, MATLAB, and SHELL. It is modular. It is easy to import and create new modules. There are many libraries available. For example, Web, XML, BD, Audio, Image, and others. All you need to do is find the right one. Python is portable. Just about all platforms are supported. Python is installed automatically on Linux and Mac OS X. It has a BSD license-free software. Documentation is partly complete because the language is under construction. A small comparison. Python versus C or C++. Python has at least 10 times fewer lines of code than C and C++. There is no need to compile. Python is slower, but at the same time, it is easily expandable. Python versus Java. There's less lines of code with Java. And with Jython, it's Java and Python. Python versus Bash, CH, and Perl. Python is more structured and therefore more readable. Python versus MATLAB. Python is more readable and it has more general libraries. Python is not yet the same functionality as MATLAB as it specializes in libraries and plots. But there's some very promising projects. How to launch Python and IDLE. IDLE opens a window in which you type and execute the Python commands. There are two operating modes. The first one is interactive, REPL, read eval print loop. The second one is script. Choose file, click new window to open a window where you can write a program. You can check Python's integrated development environment list on Wikipedia description page. In this video, we will discuss about constants, variables, expressions, and instructions. Number one, constants. Fixed values, such as numbers, letters, and strings, are called constants because their value does not change. Constants that contain numeric values can be written in any way, while string constants use the single or double dash apostrophe. For example, writing print one, two, three, in double apostrophes will result in the number 123 displayed on the screen. Writing print 98.6 will result in 98.6, while writing print hello world will result in the text hello world written on the screen. These examples are for Python 2. In Python 3, you need to write print, then open parentheses, write the value, and end the parentheses. Number 2. Variables. A variable is a name stored in the computer's memory, where a programmer can store data and then retrieve the data using the name of the variable. It is up to the programmers to choose the name of the variables. It is possible to change the contents of a variable during a subsequent assignment. Let's define x is equal to 12.2 and y is equal to 14. We can redefine x to have a new value of 100 by writing x is equal to 100 after the initial definition of x. Rules for naming Python variables. It may begin with a letter or under dash. It should not begin with numbers or special characters. It may contain letters, numbers, and underlines. They are sensitive to the shift lowercase. Good examples are spam, x, spam 23, underline speed. Bad examples are 23 spam, number sign sign or var dot 12. These are different variables, uppercase spam and all cap spam because of the fact that they are written in different casing. Reserved words. You cannot take the reserved words as variables or identifier names. These are and, del, for, is, race, assert, elif, from, lambda, return, break, else, global, not, try, class, except, if, or, while, continue, access, import, 
has yield to find finally in print as and with phrases or lines assignment instructions x is equal to 2 is an assignment instruction assigning an expression x is equal to y plus 2 instructions to print on screen print x in python 2 print uppercase x in python 2 print lowercase x in python 3 assignment instructions we assign a value to a variable with the assignment statement equal sign. An assignment statement consists of an expression on the right side and a variable to store the result. x is equal to 3.9 times x times 1 minus x. The expression is on the right. Once it is evaluated, the result is assigned to x. The variable is a memory allocation used to store a value, for example 0.6. The value stored in a variable can be updated by replacing the previous value, 0.6, with a new value, 0.93. x is equal to 3.9 times x times 1 minus x. Number 3. Digital expressions. Due to the lack of mathematics symbols on computer keyboards, we use apostrophe computer dialect to express classical mathematical operations. The asterisk is multiplication. The exponent elevation to power is expressed differently than in mathematics. You can find in the table the meaning of each of the signs. Here are some examples. Type x is equal to 2. Hit enter. Then type x is equal to x plus 2 and hit enter. Then print x. You will get 4. Type y is equal to 440 times 12. Hit enter and type print y. The result is 5,280. Type Z is equal to Y over 1,000. Print Z. Hit enter. The result is 5. Type J is equal to 23. Hit enter. K is equal to J percentage sign modulo 5. Print K. Hit enter. The result is 3. Type print 4. Asterix, asterix to the power of 3. Evaluation order. When we chain operations together, Python must know their processing order. This is called operation priority. Which operation has priority over others? x is equal to 1 plus 2 times 3 minus 4 divided by 5, asterix, asterix 6. Operations priority rules. Operator's priority rules. Rule from highest to lowest priority. Number one, parentheses are always respected. Number two, the exponent elevation to power. Number three, multiplication, division, and rest. Number four, addition and subtraction from left to right. One plus two, asterisk, asterisk, to the power of three, divided by four, multiplied by five, is equal to 1 plus 8 divided by 4 multiplied by 5 is equal to 1 plus 2 multiplied by 5 is equal to 1 plus 10 is equal to 11. So if you type x is equal to 1 plus 2 asterisk asterisk 3 dash 4 asterisk 5 then hit enter and type print capital X the result is 11. Operators priority recommendations. Remember the rules from top to bottom. When writing code, use parentheses. When you write code, keep the mathematical expression simple enough to be understood. Decompose long series of mathematic operations to make them more readable. The whole division in Python 2 is strange. The whole division truncates the decimals. Type print 10-2, hit enter, result is 5. Type print 9-2, result is 4. Type print 99-100. Result is zero. Floating point divisions produce floating point numbers. This is valid in Python 2. In Python 3, the result will be accurate. Type print 10.0-2.0. Result is 5.0. Type print 99.0-100.0. Result is 0 0.99. Integer and floating point mixing. When you perform an operation, where an operand is an integer 
and the other operand is a floating point, the result is a floating point. The integer is converted to a floating point before performing the operation. Type print 99-100, result is 0. Type print 99-100.0, result is 0 0.99. If you type 99.0-100, the result is 0 0.99. If you type print 1 plus 2 times 3 divided by 4.0 minus 5, the result is negative 2.5. What does type mean? In Python, variables, literals, and constants have a type. Python knows the difference between an integer and a string. For example, plus means addition for numbers and concatenation for strings. If you type ddd is equal to 1 plus 4 and type print ddd, you get 5 as a result. If you type eee, is equal to hello plus there. Print EEE, -E, it will result in hello there. Python knows each type that is available. Some operations are prohibited. It is not possible to add one to a string. We can ask Python for the type of something using the function type. EEE -E -E is equal to hello plus there. If you type EEE, -E -E, is equal to EEE -E -E plus 1, an error will appear, since it is not possible to add numbers to strings. You can only add 1 to the EEE -E -E string if you put it in parentheses. Type of EEE -E -E will give you type string. If you type hello, type of EEE -E -E will give type string, just like type hello. Just like type hello, type of 1 will say that it is an integer. Multiple numbers types. Numbers have two main types. Int are integers. For example, negative 14, negative 2.0, 1, 100, 401,233. Float are floating point numbers and have a decimal part. For example, negative 2.5, 0, 0.0, 98.6, 14.0. Float Capital I E E E minus seven five four double precision sixty four bit fifty three bits of binary precision fifteen to seventeen bits of decimal precisions. There are other types of numbers. They are variants of integers and floats. X is equal to one. Type of X will give integer. Temp is equal to ninety eight point six. Type of temp will give you float. Pay attention to the accuracy of the float. Calculate in the REPL 0 0.7 minus 0 0.8. Calculate float 2 to the power of 53 and float 2 to the power of 53 plus 1. Calculate 2 divided by 3. For accounting calculations, use the decimal type. The decimal module contains the decimal class. Decimal floating point has a default precision of 28 digits. Precision. To block the passage from float to decimal, do decimal.getContext.traps decimal.floatOperations is equal to true. To fix the precision of the decimals, write decimal.getContext. Pay attention to operators' implementations. Modulo does not work in the same way for int and decimal types in Python. You can find examples on the right-hand side of the display. First, we defined a function that results true or false. If a number can be divided by 2 without having a remainder, you can perform tests to see which numbers are divisible by 2. Test the function with decimal.decimal negative decimal, 3. Python maintains consistency in calculating the decimal type. The dash dash sign is division floor. It divides the first operand by the second. Check the expression x is double equal x double dash divided by y multiplied with y plus x percentage sign modulo y. This is always true, even for the decimal type, so dash dash does not work in the same way as for int. The Python fractions module. This is a module that can be imported in Python by writing. 
from fractions import fraction. To enter the n divided by d fraction in Python, enter fraction n comma d. You can find some examples written on the presentation. Conversion of a type. When we use integers and floating point numbers in an expansion, integers are implicitly covered to float. We can control this with the integer function int and float. Print float of 99 divided by 100 will result in 0 0.99. i is equal to 42. Type i will say integer. f is equal to float of i. Print f will say 42.0. Type of f will say float. Print 1 plus 2 times float of 3 divided by 4 minus 5 will give negative 2.5. Conversion of a string. We can use int and float to do a string to integer conversion. svol is equal to 1, 2, 3. Type of svol will say string. An error is obtained if the string contains no numeric characters. Write ival is equal to int of svol. Type of ival will say integer. Print ival plus 1 will give 124. In the case where we defined a string named nsv is equal to hello bob, if we write niv is equal to int of nsv, we will get an error since nsv is a string initially, not a number. How to accept users' inputs. We can instruct Python to stop and read user data with raw input. The raw input function returns a string. In Python 3, the same can be done with the input function. Type name is equal to raw input, who are you? Print hello, comma, name. The result will be hello and then the name. Convert user's inputs. If we want to read a number from the user, we must convert it from string to number with the type conversion function. INP is equal to raw under dash input Europe floor question mark. USF is equal to int int plus 1 print us floor usf will print the floor that the user inserted later we will see how to handle bad entries comments in python all of that follows hash sign is ignored by python what is the use of comments to describe what happens in a code sequence to document who wrote the code or other auxiliary information Disable a line of code, maybe temporarily. Here are examples of comments. Operations on strings. Some operators apply to strings. Plus implies concatenation. Asterisk implies multiple concatenation. Python knows when it processes a string or number and acts accordingly. Print ABC plus 123 will give ABC123. While print high asterisk 5 will give high 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 high. Variables with mnemonic names. Since we're able to select the name of a variable, there are a few good practices to respect. We name the variables so that we can remember what they store. Mnemonic equals reminder. This can confuse students because well named variables appear often, so it appears their keyboards. What does this code do? Exercise. Write a program that asks the user his hours and his hourly rate in order to calculate his salary. How many hours? 35. Hourly rate? 2.75. Pay? 96.25. Strings. A string is a sequence of characters. A string uses quotes, single or double. Between strings, plus means concatenate. A string can also contain numbers. String numbers can be converted to numbers with int. If we do not convert it, there will be a type error since it cannot add strings and integer types together. Reading and conversion. It is preferable to read the input data with strings and then convert this data to the desired type. This gives us more control in situations where there are errors and or erroneous entries to the user. To get a numeric type with raw underscore input, it is necessary to convert the string. A look inside a string. 
a character contained in a string can be used by using an index enclosed in brackets. The value of the index must be an integer and the first element starts at zero. The value of the index can be the result of an expression. You will get a Python index error if you try indexing beyond the end of a string, so be careful when constructing index values and slices. Strings have length. There is an integrated length function that returns the length of the string. We already know what a function is. However, here it is reminded. By using the while declaration and an iteration variable, as well as the len function, a loop can be constructed to display individually each letter in the string. This code prints both the index starting from zero to the length of the string and each corresponding letter from the string. The result is on the right side on a vertical. When the plus operator is used with strings, it means concatenation or adding two strings together. Here we compare the word that is inserted by user to the word friend. If the word is before friend in the dictionary, then the program will print the phrase the word comes before friend, else it will print the word is after friend or print all right friend if the word is equal to friend. Strings libraries. Python has a number of string functions which are in the string library string. These functions are already integrated in each string. The call to these is done by adding the function to the string variable, as you can see in the right side example. These functions do not modify the original string. Instead, they return a new string that has been transformed. Here you get all the possible keywords that you can add to a string to modify the string or to get an information regarding the string. You can capitalize it, count, see what it ends with, find out if it is in uppercase, write split, translate, and many others. Here is the explanation for some of them. Replace. Return a copy of the string with all occurrences of substring old replaced by new. If the optional argument count is given, only the first count occurrences are replaced. R find. Return the highest index in the string where substring sub is found, such that sub is contained within s, start, colon, end. Optional arguments start and end are interpreted as in slice notations. Return negative one on failure. The find method should be used only if you need to know the position of sub. To check if sub is a substring or not, use the in operator. R index, like R find, but raises value error when the substring sub is not found. R just, return the string right justified in a string of length width. Padding is done using the specified filled char default is an ASCII space. The original string is returned if width is less than or equal to len s. You can find more of these on the link below. Here are some other used string methods. The way they work is that you write the string, then a dot, then the name of the method. Some require parameters in their parentheses, some do not. The parameters between a square bracket is optional. You can make a copy of a string in lowercase or uppercase. Often, when searching for a string with find, you first convert the string to lowercase to find a string independent of the case. By using the find method, you can access a particular item in the string. For example, we try to find the add sign in the email address. It will give out the number corresponding to the index position in the email address. We also printed the first position of a space in the text after the add symbol and the hotspot name of the email address, also known as the domain. The format method allows you to format a string, usually to display it, using a canvas containing fields which are used to specify the format and arguments to fill these fields. The syntax is canvas dot format arguments. The formatting fields in the canvas string are delimited by curly bracket and each field is populated by the corresponding argument. Conditional execution. 
This represents testing the veracity and falsity of an expression. Any numeric value other than zero is true. Only the value zero is false. The small script above will only display false if you enter the value zero. For any other numeric value, you will get true. If you enter a string or a list, you will still get true. Only channels or empty lists will be considered false. Conditional stages. Program x is equal to 5. If x is smaller than 10, print smaller. If x is greater than 20, print bigger. Else print end. Output. Smaller, comma, end. As you can see, only two of the words were written, since only these conditions were met. Comparison operators. Boolean expressions query and respond with yes or no, which allows us to control the course of the program. Boolean expressions that use the comparison operators evaluate by true, false, yes, no. Comparison operators control the variables but do not change them. Remember, the equal sign is used for assignment. You can find in the table the meaning of each of the signs. We have here a list of tests for x. If it is equal to greater than 4, equal to 5, and so on. One-way decisions. Here is the line of thought. If x is equal to 5 or to 6, we also wrote print for each statement to observe the line of thought. We test it if it is equal to 5, print it that it is equal to 5, then we went to the second condition and printed the status to observe if the program actually tested x to 6. This method can be useful to debug a program. Intendation rules. Increase indentation after you declare an if or for statement after the column. Maintain indentation to indicate the scope of the blocked lines that are affected by if or for. Return the intendation to the return of the decrement level if or for to indicate the end of the block. Blank lines are ignored. They do not affect indentation. Comments on a line are either ignored with regard to indentation. Warning. Disable tab. Most text editors can convert tabs to spaces. Make sure to enable this function. Notepad++. Go to Settings. Preferences. Language menu. Tab settings. Text Wrangler. Go to Text Wrangler. Preferences. Editor defaults. At what point the line is indented, it matters very much for Python. If you mix tabs and spaces, you might have indentation errors. Even if everything looks normal to you, please do this now while you're thinking about it, so that everything is fine in the future. Here are some examples of increased and decreased indentation. Think of the beginning and end of the blocks. Purple increases, maintains after, if, or for. Yellow arrows indicates decreases to indicate the end of the block. Think of the beginning and end of the blocks. Each block of code needs to have his own level of indentation. Nested decisions. They represent conditions that can be met inside another condition. An if statement inside another if statement. Let's say that x is equal to 42. We take into consideration if x is greater than 1. In this case, we print is more than 1. Then we also consider if x is less than 100 and print lower than 100 if this condition is met. If either of the two conditions are not met, we print done. We also print done at the end if one or both conditions are true. Two ways decisions. Sometimes we want to do one thing if the expression is true and something else if the expression is false. It's like a bifurcation on the road. We have to choose one path or the other, but not both. If x is less than 2, we print not bigger, else we print bigger. Two ways using else. The same situation as before can be done with else, instead of the second if, multi-lane. This is when multiple options are considered. If x is less than 2, print small. Else, if x is less than 10, print medium. And otherwise, print large. Here we have a second example, when x is equal to 20 multiple options, when there isn't an else option. In this case, we do not consider all the possible options, just a few. 
Nothing else happens if x is not in any of the considered options. In the case on the right, we consider all of the possible options. Multi-track puzzles. Which line will never be printed on the screen? On the left side example, it will never print something else, since any number is less than or higher than or equal to 2, while on the right side at least one of the print statements will be printed. Try except structure. Delimiting a section of code with try and accept in cases where we want to test an option or where the code can cause a failure of the program called dangerous code. If the code in the try section works, accept is ignored. If the code in try fails, the code in accept is executed. When we run the following code, it stops where it finds an error. In the second example, the same code is written with try except structure. Here, when the first step fails, the accept clause executes and the program continues. When the second clause succeeds, the accept clause is ignored and the program continues. We created a variable called ASTR that equals to hello Bob. In the try statement, we try to convert the string ASTR to an integer. Since this gives an error, the accept clause executes and prints negative 1. In the second example, same variable equals to 1, 2, 3. The conversion to an integer will be successful and 1, 2, 3 will be printed to the screen. In this example, we created a variable called ASTR that equals to the name Bob. In the try statement, we try to convert the string ASTR to an integer. Since this gives an arrow, ISTR will be negative 1. This is a simple example to test if a user input is a number or not. If the try clause returns an arrow, then it is not a number. On the right side, you can see the script executed. Here's an exercise for you to do. Rewrite your payroll program to give the employee 1.5 times the hourly rate for hours worked over 40 hours. Rewrite your payroll using try and accept so that it handles non-numeric entries. Consider possible user input errors. Minimal form of a try block. Try block of code to test, except block of code to execute in case of error, or with an exception that can be caught and a message gets printed on the screen. We can also set a tuples of expressions for cases where the same code must be interpreted for different errors, like except IO error, value error. Therefore, we have several except statements considering different errors that can happen, and include a finally clause. Else will allow to execute an action if no error occurs in the block. This will be run if either the try nor the accept gives a result or not. Built-in exceptions. Some exceptions contain other exceptions. For example, exception groups, all exceptions except keyboard interrupt, system exit, and of course, base exception which groups all exceptions. The hierarchy is as follows. Base exception groups all built-in exceptions. User-defined exceptions should not inherit them directly, but inherit from exception. System exit is the exception thrown by sys.exit. If it is not intercepted by an exception, the program stops. It does not inherit from exception, so that when the developer seeks to catch all possible errors, it does not prevent the program from quitting. Keyboard interrupt is stated when the user presses interrupt keys, usually Ctrl plus C. Like system exit, it inherits directly from base exception for the same reasons. Exception groups all exceptions that do not relate to program closure. Your own exceptions must derive from it. It is usually used to ensure that everything worked well, and if not, to intercept and then display the error that occurred. Customize exceptions. Raising an exception. Raise exception type message. We set year as year input from the user. We try to convert the year to an integer, since it should not be a string or character. If it is less than zero, we give it an error message. If the conversion to integer fails, we set another message. Here is a class named myException with two methods. INIT surrounded by double underscores takes reason as an argument. 
the str function is the one that is called when trying to display the instance of the exception. I have so far called e. Here it refers to reason. There is then a function multiplier by 5, which multiplies the argument n by 5, provided that it is not greater than 20. Otherwise, the keyboard race is used to launch the exception. Doc string. The doc string is a string placed just after the definition of a module, class, function, or method. This string becomes the special doc attribute of the object. We have to find an additional function that returns the result of adding two numbers together. Writing doc strings offers many advantages. The help function displays this documentation in a shell. Programming tools such as shells or IDEs display this documentation when the developer who does not read your code but uses it needs it. You can generate a good code doc with commands that extract these doc strings. We can also document modules by placing doc string as the first expression. You can type the doc where I have written, here's a great module that will do many great things. We can document a class and its methods also. You can write the doc for the class after defining the class name or after defining the method. Architecture of Python program. A module is a document that can be written on the disk as file under dash name pi, such as file.pi. Organization of the different constitutes of a program in independent modules promotes code reuse. It also lets you partition the namespace. At the top level is the class. This uses modules that can be connected with other modules to constitute the standard library model. To import. Form 1. Import module. Imports the entire module called module. Creates a new namespace that has the name of the module. Form 2. From module import attribute 1, attribute 2, and so on. Imports the enumerated attributes of the module, module. The imported attributes are copied to the current namespace. Form 3. From module import. Imports all the attributes of the module, module. The imported attributes are copied to the current namespace. Example, x is equal to 1, y is equal to 1, 2. So we can import the attributes of 2, 2, like example 1. First we import the module 2, 2. Then, when we call it, we get the result of x or y. Example 2. By using from 2, 2 import x, y. You can do the same thing. Import process. Find the module file. You can find it in SYS path. Compile the code. This step produces a .pyc file for all the imported modules. Execute code to create objects and associate them with attributes. The module search is done by searching in current program directory, paths in Python path, directories of the standard library. The search continues until a file with the correct name is found. Be careful not to hide the standard modules with your own modules. The path attribute of the SYS module can be queried from a list of paths that will be explored by the module import process. On my machine, it gives the file path of the Python installation files. The import process transforms the contents of a file into a namespace containing the set of attributes defined in the library. After importing a module foo, all the attributes x, y, z, etc. of the file 22py will be called 22.x, 22.y, 22.z, and so on. By putting several files in the same directory, we create a group of modules, or package. In Python, we specify a path to get a file by separating directory named with dot. For example, import dir dot mod. For Python to recognize a directory as a package, it must contain a file name double underscore init name double underscore dot py. Typically, this file contains initialization statements for the module group. The file may be empty but it must still be present. Its content will be executed before importing the first module containing in the group. The group has its own namespace. 
Module groups are used to group together modules that work together and also to avoid file name conflicts. Two modules with the same name can coexist provided they belong to different groups. Now an exercise. We have created the folder C colon dash text, then the utils package in this folder. In this package, we create a file func.py with a function give underscore me underscore your underscore name def give underscore me underscore your underscore name colon return high tech. You can try using our give me your name function from another module variable double underscore name double underscore this variable double underscore name double underscore is automatically defined for each module file. If the module is executed directly by the interpreter, then this variable takes the value double underscore main double underscore. On the contrary, if the module is imported, then the variable takes as the value the module name. Functions, arguments, parameters. This step stores and uses. We define a program by defining the module thing that prints hello and fun. When we call it, it will print the two words. I have also placed another print and a new call of the function thing. You can see on the right side how it does this action whenever it is called. There are two kind of functions in Python. The built-in functions provided by Python, raw underscore input, type float int, etc and also the functions we define and use ourselves. The names of embedded functions are considered as reserved words. They are not used to name variables. In Python, a function is reusable code that takes an input argument, performs actions, and returns one or more results. A function is defined with the reserved word def. A function is called by using its name, parentheses, and an argument in an expression. The argument of the max function is the text hello world. We assign this function and argument to the variable big. The result is w, since this is the letter closer to the end of the alphabet. A function is a part of code. A function takes a certain input and produces an output. Hello world is the input, while w is the output. Type conversion. When using an integer and a floating number in an expression, the integer is implicitly converted to a floating point. Conversion is possible with the built-in functions int and float. Defining our own functions. Create a new function using the keyword def, followed by optional parameters in parentheses. Indent the body of the function. This sets the function but will not execute the body of the function. You can see a new example written on the slide. We have defined the print lyrics function. However, if we do not call it, then it does not perform its action. It just waits. So we can print other lines before calling it. When you call it by typing its name, it will also execute its commands. You can try it on your own. Once the function is defined, we can call it or invoke it as many times as we want. It is the module store and reuse. An argument is a value that we pass into the function as input when we call function. We use the arguments in order to direct the function to do different things when we call it at different times. We put the arguments in parentheses after the function name. A parameter is a variable that we use in the definition of the function. This is a title that allows the code in the function to access arguments for invoking a particular function. I defined a function to greet people in different languages. You can see the example on the right side. Often, a function will have its arguments, will make calculations to return a value that will serve as a value to the function call in the calling expression. This is the role of the return keyboard. A fruitful function is one that produces a result return of value. The return statement completes the execution of the function and returns the result of the function. The previous example has been modified to accommodate the person's name. A different example to show how parameters work. 
the max function allows a parameter that the function will work with. Inside the max function, this parameter can be put through a for loop to test what it is about or to compute the difference between the letters of the parameter so that it can return the correct outcome, which for this case is w. More than one parameter can be defined in the function definition. I have simply added more arguments when calling the function. We adopt the number and order of arguments and parameters. I have defined the addition function to have two parameters, then called the function with the parameters 3 and 5. The function will add them and return the result. When a function does not return a value, it is called a void. Functions that return values are fruitful. Void functions are unsuccessful. The interpreter executes the instruction lines of the program one after the other in the order in which they appear in the source code. In the script, the definition of the functions must therefore precede their use. If double under dash name double under dash two equal signs double under dash main double under dash place at the end of the module, it is used to determine whether the module is started as a program, in which case the following instructions must be executed or used as a class is imported elsewhere. In this case, this part of the code has no effect. Here is a working example for you. Define a change car ch, ca1, ca2, start, end function that replaces all the ca1 characters with ca2 characters in the ch character string from the beginning index to the fine index. The last arguments can be omitted and in this case the string is processed from one end to the other. Organize your code as paragraphs by capturing a complete thought and name it. Do not repeat. Make it work once and then reuse. If something becomes too long or too complex, separate it into logical parts and put these pieces into function. Build a library of operations that you repeat continually. May be shared with your friends. A function can accept any number of parameters. Their names do not matter much. They are used to name the values transmitted when calling the function locally. On the other hand, the order in which these parameters appear in the definition of the function is important. A default value can be given to one or more arguments of a function. For this purpose, in the definition of this function, and if we denote by arc the name of the argument, and val its default value, we will replace arc by arc is equal to val. If an argument receives a default value, it can be omitted when calling the function, but for there not to be ambiguously, arguments with default values in the definition of the function must follow those that do not. Lambda functions. In Python, a lambda function is an anonymous function to which no name has been given. The syntax is Lambda parameters expression. Note, lambda is one of the reserved words of the language. The lambda function must be on a single line and cannot contain compound statements, no assignments, no loops, etc. You can find here examples of using the lambda function. In the first example, it maps all of the result of multiplying the first 10 numbers with themselves. Can you guess what happens in the second? Function filter. Map filter are functions for processing iterations typical of functioning programming. Filter takes a function as a parameter, often a lambda. It must return true if we keep an element and false otherwise. In this example, the filter function prints the ages that are higher than 18 but lower than 30. The same can be done with the statement found on the last row of the image. The map function transforms a list using a callback function. The action performed with filter can also be performed with map. However, the parameters of the appended method are different. Now it is callback of each element of the new list. The first example, listed at the lower side of the slide, will print each character in uppercase. It is written both with a map function and with a loop. The second example will give each of the h, m, s variable a value corresponding to the number in the string 8, 19, 22. Again, the same function 
can be done with a for loop. Exercise. Write a function giving the sum of the integers from 1 to n, which are divisible by 3 or 5, mutable and immutable. An object is mutable when it is possible to modify it. An object is immutable when it is impossible to modify it. When doing operations on immutable objects to obtain a new value, one is obliged to construct another object because the operations do not make it possible to modify the original. Mutable objects provide operations to modify the value contained in the object, retaining the same object. You can see some examples of mutable and immutable objects. In the bottom left example, the variable is immutable. Even if you change the value of the variable, its ID remains the same, while in the bottom right they are mutable. When you add a text to the string, its ID changes. Try to see which are mutable and which are not from the examples on the right side. The immutable objects are numeric values, strings, and tubes. The interest of immutable objects is that one is sure that no one can change their value. All names referencing an immutable object may consider it to be a constant as long as they continue to reference it. Mutable objects are lists and dictionaries. Generally, the other objects, those you create, are also mutable. The names that reference mutable objects can see the object they reference modified by a function called by code executed in another thread. Passing parameters. In Python, in Python, all parameters are passed by references to objects, these references being associated with the names of the parameters during the call. The change from a mutable value to a parameter can be used to carry out a value return. For example, an empty list is passed and the function fills it, but to avoid as much as possible, it is better to have an explicit return of a value rather than based on more or less hidden effects. Loops and iterations. Loops repeat operations, have iteration variables, whose value changes with each loop. These iteration variables are often numeric. Their successive values will then be a sequence of numbers, an endless loop. What is this loop's problem? n never goes to a different value. It never reaches negative 1, so the loop goes on forever. Ending a loop. The break key terminates the current loop and jumps to the next statement immediately after this loop, similar to a test anywhere in the body of the loop. In this example, if the input is equal to end, the program stops the execution. Finish an iteration with continue. The keyword continue terminates the current iteration, jumps to the beginning of the loop and starts a new iteration. In this example, when the first letter of the user input is the hash sign, the program skips over. Undefined loop. While loops are called undefined loops because they are executed until a logical condition becomes false. For the loops encountered so far, it is fairly easy to determine whether they will end or will be infinite loops. It is sometimes more difficult to be sure that a loop will end. Defined loops. Often, we have a list of elements. For example, lines in a file, constituting a finite set of elements. One can build a loop that will be traveled once for each of the elements of a set using the keyword Python 4. These loops are called defined loops because they execute a finite number of times. It is said that the defined loops iterate by following the elements of a set. Simple defined loop. In this example, the for loop goes through numbers 1 to 5 and prints each value. Then the program prints fire at the end. String defined loop. Here, the for loop goes through a list of friend names and prints Happy New Year plus each name. Then the program ends. The iteration variable iterates along a sequence ordered set. The code block is executed once for each value in one of the sequence. The iteration variable traverses the set of values of the sequence. The logic is, has the loop finished? No? Then print the current value. Increase the indicator i, then ask the question again. When the indicator reaches the value that is equal to the length of the list, 
the program ends. Structure of loops. Let's look at what's happening. Note, although these examples are simple, the structures presented here apply to all sorts of loops. Building intelligent loops. When one is stuck writing code that performs one step at a time, the trick is to have a clear knowledge of what has to happen in the loop. Define first value of a variable. Ask yourself, who needs the data? Always perform one task at a time. Search, edit, or update a variable. Verify the variables. Loop through set. This example goes through all the values of a set and prints each one. We also printed before and after to see when the loop starts and when it ends. Counting in a loop. In order to count how many times the loop is executed, we introduce the variable c, which is initialized to zero and to which we add one for each execution of the body of the loop. Addition and loop. In this example, there is a variable a that initially is zero, then is incremented with each value from the list. We print a every time and one of the values of the list in order is and is not operations. Python has the operation is that is used in logical expressions. Means is the same as, similar to double equal sign, but in a stronger sense. Is not is also a logical operator. In this example, we search for the smallest value from the list. We parse the list and assign the smallest value to the smallest variable. Each time, we compare the smallest variable to an element of the list. Comments. A line begins with a sharp hash sign, is not taken into account by the interpreter. An instruction block is a sequence of statements that is aligned with the same tab. Instruction blocks are created by control statements such as if, while, and for, as well as instructions to declare functions. You can see an example of placing comments for a simple program, explaining what each function does. Reading files. A text file can be considered as a sequence of lines. You can find an example of an email. This can be considered as a file. We can save it onto our hard drive. Before we can read the contents of the file, we have to tell Python which file we want to work with and let us know what changes we want to make. We do this with the open command. The open function returns us the file handle, a variable used to perform operations on a file, similar to file open of the word processing program word. Handle is equal to open file name. Mode allows us to acquire a handle used to handle files. File name is a character string. The processing mode is optional and should be R if we intend to read the file and W if we intend to write to the file. Through the handle, you choose what you want the program to do to the file. You can open it, write to it, read from it, or close it. When a file is not found, it will give you an I.O. error, stating the file was not found. This can happen if you input the wrong path or the file no longer exists. We use a special character named new line to indicate when a line stops. In strings, we write backslash n. New line represents a character, not two. A text contains new lines at the end of the line. How to count file lines. Open a file to read only. Use a for loop to read each line. Count the lines and print the number of lines. You can remove the blanks on the right side of a string by using the rstrip function in the string library. The line spacing is considered to be a blank, and therefore it is deleted. In this example, we search for the from element. This will tell us who sent the email. We can conventionally skip a line using the continue declaration. Here, we skip the line which contains where the email was sent from. In this example, we find how many times the sentence starts with object. If the file cannot be opened, we will catch this in the try except clause. Python lists. A list is a collection. A collection allows us to put several values into a single variable. A collection is convenient because it allows us to carry full of values in a single package. 
in this example, friends and actions, or lists. What is not a collection? Most of our variables contain a value. When we add another value to our variable, the old value is replaced. So a variable is not a collection. List constants. List constants are enclosed by square brackets and the elements in the list are separated by commas. A list of items can be any Python object, even another list. A list may be empty. Each of this situation has been exemplified on the right side. Operations on lists. You can find here each operation exemplified. First, you can create an empty list. Then, create a list with four elements. Then, a list with the previous list as an element of the new list. This image shows you how to access elements by index, by interval of indexes, how to add list, concatenate, and how to repeat the same list. Then you see how to add elements to a list. At the end of it, sort the list, find an elements index, reverse the list, change a list element by index value, delete an element by index, delete by interval, and how to loop through the list. Here's a simple use of a list. Lists and loops are very good friends. Each element in the list gets printed with this for loop. Search in a list. Just like strings, we can reach each element of a list with an index specified in brackets. Lists are mutable. Strings are immutable. We cannot change the contents of a string. We have to create a new string so that we can modify it. As you can see, you get an error on the right side of the image when you try to reassign a value of the string's letters. The lists are mutable. We can change an element of a list using the index operator. We can change the values of a list, as exemplified on the right side of the image. What is the length of a list? The len function takes as a parameter a list and indicates the number of elements present in the list. In fact, len can tell us the number of elements present in any set or sequence, such as strings. Using range function. The range function gives us a list of numbers that range from 0 to 1, less than the parameter. We can create a looped index using for and an entire iterator. With an integer argument n, range returns the list of n first integers. With two integer arguments, m and n, range, m, n, returns the list of consecutive integers between m included and n excluded. With integer arguments m, k, n, range, m, n, k, returns the list of integers of the form m plus k times p, with p natural integers between m included and n excluded. A non-integer argument causes a type error error. ln in lists. Python provides two operators that allow you to check if an item is in a list. These are logical operators that give us a true or false response. They do not modify the list. Internal functions and lists. There are a number of functions in Python that allow you to define lists as parameters. Do you remember the loops we built? It's much simpler than that. Simply type the correct function for minimum, maximum, and others to get the desired result. Here are two ways of finding the average of numbers. Both accept user input. The first adds the value to a variable. Then it divides the result to the count variable, number of inputs. The second adds each input to a list, then performs the sum and divides the sum to the length of the list. Double split. Sometimes we split a line one way, then we select one part that we will split further. Here we split an email into two results, the first part of the email address, then the part after the add sign. In this picture, you can see examples of lists, of changes performed on the list and searches made from the end of the list. You can see splitting being performed and other changes being done to lists. A list of lists. One list contains objects of type list. Change basis on index. List methods. Here are exemplified the list methods, count, that counts the element of the list, insert, that inserts an element as a specific position, append, that appends an element at the end of the list, index, that shows the index of an element, 
remove, that deletes an element, reverse, that reverts the list so it begins with the last element and ends with the first element, sort, that changes the order of the elements to have the list in alphabetic order, pop, that deletes the last element of the list. Slice notion. It is possible to accept the i element of a list or a string with t of i. The slice consists of accessing a portion of a list or a string. Notation. t of debut until end takes the sublist where the substring between the indexes begin and end 1. We can use negative indices. The index negative i is the same as len negative capital I. The string s is equal to bonjour. Print s of negative 2 will give you u. Print s of 1 to negative 2 will give you onjo. Default parameters of slice. In a slice, the beginning is by default 0 to t of the four elements is the same as t of 0 to 4. In a slice, the flax is by default length of t where t of the first four elements is the same as t of 4 until the length of t, t from 0 to 7. These are the first seven elements, t from 2 to end. These are the elements from the third. The first is 0, t from beginning until negative 2. These are all elements except the last two, t of negative 5 to end. These are all the last five elements. Python dictionaries. Dictionaries are the most powerful data collections in Python. Dictionaries allow us to quickly perform database operations in Python. Dictionaries have different names in different languages. Associative arrays in Perl slash PHP. Properties or map of hash map in Java. Property bag in C hash slash dot net. List index their entries according to their position in the list. Dictionaries are like bags. They're messy. So we index these various things that we put into a dictionary, thanks to the lookup tag. Here's an example of dictionary called bag. It is initialized in the first statement. Then you enter the item and corresponding count number. You can print the entire dictionary or an individual item called key, in our case, mushroom. We can also modify its value by adding two to the number of mushroom. Thus, it becomes 5. When we print the bag again, we can see it has a different value now. Comparison of dictionaries. Dictionaries are like lists, except they use keys instead of numbers to search for values. On the left side example, we created a list, added elements to a list by using append, then retrieved elements from the list by using print and index numbers. On the right side, we created a dictionary. Again, we added elements by stating the key and the value for each entry. Then we printed the dictionary and some elements by using the key of the element. Here's a more detailed look on the two data forms. Tracebacks of dictionaries. This is an arrow to reference a key that is not in a dictionary. We can use the in operator to check whether a key is in the dictionary. Get for dictionaries. This is a way of checking if a key is already in a dictionary and assuming a default value. Checking that there is no key is so common that there is a method called get that does it for us. On the left hand side example, you can see how get works. If there is a default key value, there is no traceback. Simple count with get. We can use get and provide a default value of zero when a key is not yet in the dictionary and then simply add a plus one to that value. You can see an example where we give a value for each of the elements of the string. The value presents the number of times that elements appear in the list called names. The way to count. In general, to count the words of a line of text, the sentence is split into words. Then an analysis of that sentence of the words it contains is looped and a dictionary is used. Get the count of each word individually. In this example, we count the words in each sentence entered by the user. First, we split the sentence by each space. We get the words and then count how many times each word appears in the sentence. Here's an example where we count how many times a word appears in the phrase. 
The clown ran after the car, and the car ran into the tent, and the tent fell down on the clown and the car. You can see that the appears seven times. Get list key of values. You can get a list of keys, values, or objects, both from a dictionary. You can see that we printed here the keys of the pairs of key values from the dictionary. That is John, Chuck, and Fred. Then the values, and then all of the pairs. Tuples. Tuples are another type of sequence that works more or less like a list. They have elements whose index starts at zero. Here we have two examples of tuples. The first one contains three names. If we print x of two, we will get the third name. In the second example, we have a tuple of three numbers. We can print the entire tuple by typing print y and we can obtain the maximum number by using the max function. We can also iterate over the tuple by using a for loop. Here, we print each element of the tuple, but tuples are immutable. Unlike lists, once a tuple is created, its contents cannot be changed, like a string. In the first example, we change the value of a list element by reassigning x of 2 to the value of 6. In the second and third example, when we try to do the same thing with a tuple, we get an error. Tuple object does not support item assignment. It is important to get used to the errors so you will recognize what you're doing wrong when writing code. Operations on tuples. Here are examples of operations that can be performed on tuples. You can create an empty tuple. It is possible to create a tuple containing another tuple. You can access the elements of the tuple by using an index value or an interval of values. You can get the length of a tuple, concatenate tuples, and repeat a tuple several times. You cannot use the methods append, sort, index, reverse, assign new values, or delete an element of the tuple. Things not to do with tuples. You can see here the errors that you get when using one of the methods that cannot be used with a tuple. To order a tuple is not directly possible. Property of immutability. It is necessary to go through a conversion in list, for example, then to sort it, and finally, to return to a tuple. Tuples are more efficient. Since Python does not have to construct tuple structure to be modifiable, they're simpler and more efficient in terms of memory usage and performance than lists. So in our program, when we use temporary variables, we prefer tuples to lists. Tuples and affectation. We can also put a tuple on the left side of an assignment statement. We may even omit the parentheses. Tuples and dictionaries. The items method in dictionaries returns a list of key value and tuples. In this example, we define a dictionary. We give two keys and two values, one corresponding to each key. Then we assign the items of the dictionary to the tuple tubs. When we print tubs, you can see it is a tuple of keys and values. Tuples are comparable. Comparison operations work with tuples and other sequences. If the first element is equal, Python continues to the next element, and so on, until it finds the elements that differ, using sorted methods. We can do this more directly using the built-in sort function that takes a sequence as a parameter and returns a sorted sequence. In this example, we have a dictionary of keys and values. We print the keys and values tuples by using d.items and use the sorted method on the tuple that contains the keys and values. Print function. The print function is used to write data to the standard output sys.stdout or other. Print will take the data and display it as a single string. Here are the print function arguments. Print objects to the stream file, separated by sep and followed by n.sep and and file, if present, must be given as keyboard arguments. All non-keyboard arguments are converted to strings like str, thus and written to the stream, separated by sap colon and followed by end. Both sep and end must be strings. They can also be non, which means to use the default values. If no objects are given, print will just write end. 
The file argument must be an object with a write string method. If it is not present or non, sys.stdoubt will be used. Whether output is buffered is usually determined by file, but if the flush keyboard argument is true, the stream is forcibly flushed. In the first example, we print the numbers in the parentheses with a dot separator. The second example prints the numbers from 0 to 3 with a space at the end of each one. The third example writes a message in a text document and prints a message into it. The format method. In Python, it is possible to use placeholders for an element that will be provided later. For example, in the sentence print arch colon percentage sign 5d unit price colon percentage sign 8.2f percentage sign 453,59.058. The percentage sign is a placeholder. When we type it in the print sentence, Python will know that it should receive a value at the end of the statement to be printed that needs to be inserted in the same sentence at that particular place. Here we specify 5 and 8 for the width, two digits of precision. D stands for number, while F is used to represent floating point number. You can check what letters you can use in which case on the right side for signed integer decimal, unsigned octal, decimal, hexadecimal, and so on. You can use optional parameters such as keys, flags, width, precision, length type, conversion type. The only mandatory syntax is the placeholder and the value at the end. The use of this technique is inherited from version 2. It is preferable to use the format method of the string class in version 3. The format method allows fine-tuning the creation of formatted strings. It will be used for display via print, for recording via f.write, or in other cases. Syntax is s.format of args and key w args. In the sentence, first argument, colon, zero between curly brackets, comma, second one, colon, one between curly brackets, you can use any values at the end of the string by writing dot, format, and a pair of values between parentheses. Python will place the values at the corresponding places, 0 and 1. Arguments can be used more than once. You can have various precision, just like in the standard formatting. You can find an example at the lower left side with 2 and 3 digits of precision. You can use the format method when you don't yet know the values that need to be printed when they will be the outcomes of one or more functions. Here are examples of simple format placements, replacing the field names with the help of a list or dictionary. You can see a simple format placement at the top. The curly brackets are placeholders for the elements written in the parentheses following the word format. You can also format a string to appear between curly brackets. Simply include the curly brackets enclosed in two pairs of curly brackets. The last example of simple format shows how to display a dotted line 10 times. Formatting with lists allow you to access list elements to have them displayed in the printed sentence. The same goes for elements of a dictionary. Have a look at them and if you have any questions, please contact me. You can find examples of replacing with numbers, text conversions with str and repr, numerical format and other examples. Here are some examples of using numbers, either from the math or system library. Then you see an example of displaying two texts, one with str as a string that does not display the backlash n and the second with repr, which displays the text in quotes and writes every word from the initial string, even the backlash n that is usually an indication to go to a new line. Then you see some numerical format examples, octal, hexadecimal and binary numbers displayed. The same number, 42, is displayed in different number formats. We can display different constants such as n, pi, k, as well as complex numbers, negative numbers and very large numbers in a desired format. Regular expressions. In computer science, a regular expression known as regex 
or rejxp, provides a concise and flexible means for matching text strings, such as special characters, words, or character patterns. A regular expression is written in a formal language that can be interpreted by a regular expression processor. These are very intelligent joker expressions for searching and parsing text strings. Use re.search as you were using the find method. You can see how searching with line dot finds looks and compared with re.search. You need to import the re library for this. Use re.search like you would use starts with. Joker characters. The point corresponds to any character. If you add the asterisk symbol, it will be repeated any number of times, depending on the degree of cleanliness of your data and the purpose of your request, you can slightly shorten your search. When we use the re.findAll, it returns a list of zero or more secondary strings that match the regular expression. In this example, we print the numbers that can be found in the sentence. When we try to print the vowels that are capital letters, the outcome is null, since the only capital is M. Parentheses are not part of the search, but they specify where the string to be extracted begins and ends. Here's an example of obtaining the email address from a string that represents an email received. Then we obtain some information regarding the email. What is the index of the at sign? Which place in the string? Then where is the first base and print the webmail host? Classes and objects. Surprising at first, there are no private or protected qualifiers. Everything is public. By convention, a variable is for internal use. It is named with an underscore in front. No destructor or destructive need. The special methods are framed by two underscores. For example, def double underscore init double underscore of self colon enter pass. A variable whose name begins with two underscores, is inaccessible directly, raises an exception attribute error, except that there is always a way to access it in Python. Some attributes of the classes. There is no abstract class notion. There are multiple inheritive to C++. Depth first, left to right. The methods are all virtual. Class has attributes. It has special methods. Function super will refer to the parent class. To declare it, you write the class name, colon, enter, and below that you write the instructions. Here's an example. We declared the class time that has the init method. It has three attributes, hours, minutes, and seconds. The class has the show hour method that prints the time in the time format. This can be given by the user or can be taken from the system. Init. The initializer requires constructor double underscore init double underscore is a classical function. You can define parameters, default or not, named or not. Methods. In Python, there's no private attribute. Everything is public. This means that if you want to modify an attribute from outside the class, you can. Just like the show our method, here we define the translate method. Objects. A class attribute is an attribute that belongs not to the object, but to the class. A class underscore attribute is accessible from a class without creating an instance, so without having to do a class. On the other hand, object underscore detail is not accessible if there is no instance. An instance has access to both class and object attributes. We use here a decorator who says that the method is a class method, therefore accessible without creating any instance. The class method notation transforms the method to a class method. The naming convention changes. The first argument is no longer called self, but CLS. Let's try to make private counter. Replace counter by double underscore counter. It does not work. You can no longer directly access type of self dot 
double underscore counter. So you need a method that returns the double underscore counter. Accessing a class attribute from an instance method works, but if you call robot.robot instances, it gives an error. It takes an instance to know the value of the counter is not good. If one removes self, the method becomes inaccessible from the objects on the top left example. Robot instances is accessible from class the class. Thanks to the add static method, robot instances decorator is accessible from the class and the objects on the lower left example. Static methods versus classes methods. A static method is a method that knows nothing about the class or instance that invokes it. It just gets the arguments that were passed, no first argument implicit self or CLS. It is almost useless in Python. You can use a module function instead. A class method is a method that receives the class, then invokes it as the first argument. It is useful when you want the method to work with a class or these base classes. Here, the class method calls the static method. Special methods and attributes. The name of a special method takes the form double underscore special method double underscore. The special attribute double underscore dict double underscore. By default, when you develop a class, all objects pulled from this class will have a special double underscore dict double underscore attribute. This attribute is a dictionary that contains as keys the names of the attributes and as values the values of the attributes. For example, object dot double underscore dear double underscore gives the attribute dictionary. Special methods and attributes. Method double underscore del double underscore which will be called at the time of destruction of the object. Double underscore REPR double underscore method affects how the object is displayed when you type the name directly. Special method double underscore str double underscore specially uses to display the object with print. By default, if no double underscore str double underscore method is defined, Python calls the double underscore repr double underscore method of the object. The double underscore str double underscore method is also called if you want to convert your object to a string with the constructor str. The special method double underscore get attr double underscore allows to define a method of access to our attributes. This method is called when you type object.attribute, not to modify the attribute, but simply to access it. Python searches for the attribute and, if it does not find it, in the object, and if a double underscore get attr double underscore method exists, it will call it by passing the name of the attribute in question as a parameter in the form of a string of characters. The double underscore set attr double underscore method defines access to an attribute for editing. If you write object dot attribute underscore name is equal to new underscore value, the special method double underscore set attr double underscore will be called object dot double underscore set attr double underscore attribute underscore name new underscore value. Again, the name of the searched attribute is passed as a string. This method is used to trigger an action as soon as an attribute is modified. The double underscore del attr double underscore method is called when you want to remove an attribute from the object, doing the object dot attribute. In addition to self, it takes the name of the attribute to be deleted. Mathematical operators overload. The special methods allowing the overload of mathematic operators. Double underscore ad double underscore overload operator plus double underscore sub double underscore operator overload minus double underscore mul double underscore operator overload star double underscore true div double underscore operator overload dash double underscore 
floor diff double underscore operator overload double dash integer division double underscore mod double underscore operator overload percentage sign modulo double underscore puff double underscore operator overload double star power it is also possible to overload the operators plus equals negative equals and etc zip function the zip function allows you to combine several lists into one in order to make the iterations more efficient zip thus performs the following function for a list abc and another list def zip will give us a list a comma d as a tuple and b comma e as a tuple local function it is possible to define a local function including it in another function as you can see in these examples this is all for this part of the course thank you for taking part in it hope to hear from you